there everyone and welcome to the Arm Pastor channel. I am the Arm Pastor and I'm here to do another review with you on a weapon that is going to become my personal defense weapon um, coming up here for the unforeseen future. That is a weapon you've probably very familiar with seeing that is the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 9mm. Uh, very excited about this weapon. I've been excited about it since the first time I shot a friend of mine's uh, and uh, was able to pick one up for myself. So what I wanted to do was bring you out on the range today. Uh, I've only shot about two magazines through this and that's been all personal defense ammo. Uh, my personal carry has been the Corbon 115 grain plus P 9mm ammo. I've shot about two magazines of that through this just to make sure, see how it performed. Uh, it did well in that. And, and what I want to do today is to just shoot some normal full metal jacket Federals, just about 50 rounds through it, bring you out on the range so you can see how it performs uh, and, and kind of give you a close up of it. But first, before we do that, why don't we go into the shop? Okay. How's it going, guys? Um, I wish we were in my shop. Uh, I actually sh shot the shooting portion of the video on a different day. Uh, wanted to take you into my shop and go ahead and uh, and and do do the do kind of a, an overview of this gun. However, it's a little cold outside today, and my shop isn't heated. Um, so we're getting some snow. We're getting some. It's kind of nasty out there, and just didn't want to be freezing while I was showing you this. So. Decided to do this from uh, my kitchen table, so I hope you don't mind. So anyway, we're talking about the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. Um, and here's a gun right here. Here's a magazine, as you can see. There's no ammo in the magazine. There is nothing, no mag in there. We'll go ahead and open it up. And uh, not pointing it at myself, but you'll see that it is completely safety checked. So we know that we have a clear firearm here and uh, so safety is of utmost uh, utmost priority here. So anyway, I uh, want to just go through a few pointers with you on uh, the Smith & Wesson MMP Shield. I've had this gun about two months now um, and it's become my primary carry weapon. Uh, I used to have a Glock 26 or I used to carry a Glock 26. Now, I have actually changed and that Glock um, I, I've decided, and I consider myself a Glock guy. I would still consider myself through and through a Glock guy, but I've decided to go ahead and make this my everyday carry. Uh, and, and you know what, I'm gonna go into that in a little bit on why I have decided to do that, but, um, and we'll get to that in just a minute. One thing, just a few things right from the front that I love about this, this firearm is this, I'm, and I'm not gonna go through the dimensions with you. You know what, you can Google those in a heartbeat, but one thing that I love about this firearm is this. Is This firearm is about one inch thick, roughly. Uh, and I'm telling you something, this is super concealable, and I'm gonna show you that in just a minute, how concealable this firearm really is. Comes with two mags. Uh, you've got this magazine, which this is the primary carry magazine. When I put it in, you'll notice that it sits flush with the bottom of the gun. Uh, that is a seven plus one magazine. Uh, so I usually do keep one in the chamber, seven in the mag, so that gives you eight rounds right there. Then I got a spare mag right here. Now this does have bullets in it. I haven't taken those out. That's an extended mag. That's got, uh, that's eight rounds. So you got another eight rounds there. I'm probably going to, for this, I've been putting it in my pocket now. Probably for this, I'm gonna go ahead and get like a Raven Concealment mag, mag pouch or something like that. I'll put a link at the bottom so you guys know where those are. I've got one of those for my Glock, my Glock mags, and they, they work flawlessly. They are awesome. Um, but anyway, um, so that's the capacity. Sights are very, very well pronounced. Uh, love that about it. Also, lots of sight options. You know, I'm probably going to go ahead and put excess sights, excess big dots on this. Um, I, I, I love those sights, and uh, eventually that's an upgrade that I want to make to this gun. The thing that I love about this gun as well is I agree with James Yeager uh, over a tactical response. Don't know if you watch his channel, but respect him, watch his stuff a lot. Um, is that this is probably, this is really the world's smallest fighting pistol, and, and not nearly as trained as James, but I'll tell you something, I agree with him. Uh, this is the world's smallest fighting pistol. You could take this into a gunfight any day of the week. Safety. Um, mine is the one that has the safety. I'll be honest with you guys. I know people have freaked out about that. Uh, I'm a Glock guy. I'm used to no safeties. I'll tell you something. I just leave it off. Very simple. Uh, I, I, I don't get it. Okay. Why did I move from the Glock 26 as my everyday carry to this? Reason being, guys, Glocks are just thick. 
okay? Seriously, um, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not a skinny guy. Uh, I'm not, not a fat guy, but I'm not a skinny guy. Um, and just the Glock is hard and heavy. Not hard to conceal. It, I mean, I did it for years. Um, but it is just, uh, it's just, it's just a big brick to be wearing around. You know, and as we're going to do all the time, I'm going to end here with my, kind of my uh, spiritual, pastoral uh, thought of the day. You know, my, I was meeting with my um, spiritual mentor, who's actually also the lead pastor of the church that um, I'm an associate pastor in, and uh, we were sitting down, and I was sharing, uh, I was sharing really a heart talk with him just this week on um, just some hard stuff that I had gone through in ministry at a previous church, and uh, where I was the lead guy. And uh, a lot of it just fell apart in my face. Still struggling with that in a lot of ways. He said to me this. He said, um, and he actually did a video blog on this week, the, on this this week, which is kind of funny. Um, he said to me, you can be prominent or you can be significant. And if you're going to be one of the two, be significant. So think about it this way, your nose, and this was him speaking, your nose is prominent, but you know what? My liver, my liver is significant. Now you don't see my liver, and if, if you saw my liver, there'd probably be, there'd be a problem, right? But, but my liver is so much more significant than my nose. Yeah, my nose is prominent, but the liver is significant. You know what Jesus said? As many of you might be familiar with, Jesus said that he didn't come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And, and I, I think about that. I think about verses like the first, uh, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And, you know, the, 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 the Gentiles or the, uh, the way Jesus was using it, the people that are, that are far from God um, use authority and power to lord it over everybody else. They want positions of prominence. People don't want, uh, you know, positions of service. People want positions of prominence. But in this kingdom of God, it's an upside-down kingdom. So I just want to encourage you guys to, to remember that it's so much more powerful and so much better to, to seek, to be significant in the lives of your co-workers, your church, your family, your friends, your neighborhood, your city. It's, 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 it's so much better to seek to be significant than to be prominent. So I encourage you with that today. This is Arm Pastor signing off, and uh, I hope you guys have a blessed one.